Hey everyone, another day, another retro gaming handheld, with this one being the Pocket Boy Game Console, R33S. The R33S is essentially a Miu Mini Plus clone, and because of which availability is incredibly limited at the moment, with listings generally being either relatively inflated in terms of cost, or disappearing very quickly. I definitely recommend waiting for wider availability if you're interested in picking one up, and I'll try and update the description with any reputable sources if and when they do become available. So the R33S comes in transparent black or purple, and additionally in retro grey or white colour options. The box is incredibly similar, similar to the R36S before it, although there's a couple of potential mistakes, such as stating there's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board, which for the life of me I could never get, be able to get working. In terms of specs, the R33S is very much in line with the R36S before it too. It is also powered by the RK3326, so it will be able to play up to the PlayStation 1 and DS libraries reliably, alongside a number of, but far from all, of Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast titles too. Though, unlike the R36S, we don't have joysticks, so the level of games that we can play is even more limited here. Still, it is very neat to play the odd Dreamcast title in this form factor. Otherwise, we've got 1 gig of RAM, a 3.5 inch IPS screen, which isn't too bad at all to be fair, a 3200 milliamp battery, and a weight of only 165 grams. It comes with a flavour of RQS straight out of the box, which is always just great to see just to how easy it is to use. In terms of a few size comparisons, we've got the R33S against the original Miu Mini on the left and Ammonix RG35XX on the right, which of course is also very similar in terms of size. The R33S does give off a pretty good first impression, very much like its inspiration does. The clear purple shell does look great, and just having a quick look around the shell, we've got the power button on top, a micro SD card slot at the bottom of each side, two USB-C ports and a headphone jack on alongside the bottom. We do have a battery compartment slot, but the battery is soldered on, so it's far from a plug and play replacement option. The blue highlights look a bit peculiar against the purple, but all in all the build quality isn't terrible, although there are a few niggles. First, and likely the most obvious, is just how stiff and loud the shoulder buttons are to press. So let's just have a quick listen. Otherwise, the controls are unfortunately just so-so in my opinion. The face buttons aren't too bad to be fair. They're relatively responsive, but they do bounce back quite slowly and so aren't the most reliable in terms of quick and multiple inputs. They're not horrendous by any means, and likely the best part of the controls overall, but they are still a bit too hollow for my personal taste. The D-pad, however, really lets the rest of the controls down. It's just not very reliable due to being so sensitive in the centre pivot, meaning that diagonals are relatively tricky to pull off intentionally, but easy to accidentally press. There's barely any resistance to any of it in any direction, and it's just not a great D-pad all in all. So, with this poor D-pad alongside the crunchy shoulder buttons, the R33S's controls certainly feel like a pretty luckluster experience to me all in all. Some good news, at least, is the R33S does come with a flavour of RQS straight out of the box. I have covered RQS on the channel in the past, but essentially, if and where there are any missteps in configuration, which is primarily in the cases where the firmware is expecting at least one joystick in this case, it is relatively easy to jump into RetroArch and correct the setup. Though options like using the standalone emulators do become a little tricky in these cases where it's expecting a joystick, but on the whole it's a relatively easy experience to get used to and it's better than most of the standard stock firmware that we see. So I'll cut some emulation footage now and summarise back up at the end.
So all in all, the R33S isn't outright terrible, but for me, the extra power doesn't automatically make it better than its inspiration. It does have a very nice screen, the form factor is of course great, and the overall build quality isn't terrible, but its D-pad certainly lets the controls down. We'll see if and when the R33S becomes widely available, to see where its price ends up landing, but for me, unless it undercuts the RG35XX or MIUI Mini Plus, it will be a tricky recommendation. That's it for now though, thanks so much for watching.